Questions for Coach Leslie? So, Jordan, Neil was pretty honest that the defense didn't play well. They had four good games, a poor one. So, as you watched it, why? What would you think of what they did? Yeah, I, mean, I, I just think that there's a, there's a couple things we talk about and how what we have to do every every Saturday, how we have to play to be successful. And we didn't do that. Um, I just I didn't think we played. I just thought we lacked urgency. Um, I just thought we lacked uh, a little bit of energy. You know why? I don't know. You know, I'm not more disappointed than mad because of how we had played up to that point. And and you know, you do this long enough. You know, you hope those games, they don't show up. Uh, but when, if and when they do, um, you know, it's got to be your your best players that pull you out of that, whatever that funk is that day. And we we just, we didn't. We didn't play well. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm more disappointed than, than angry or upset. You're missing a couple of key player starters. How much does that hurt? I mean, it, it, they're starters for a reason. And so, anytime that you're that you're down a couple guys, um, but at the end of the day, when your number's called, you have to perform. And that's that's in in football or in any professional, um, in anything that anybody that anybody does, any job. So um, that's that was disappointing. But it, yeah, I mean, yeah, it hurt. But I'm not gonna sit here and and uh, you know we had plenty of we had. Outside of the one I know everybody wants to talk about, we had 27 chances, 27 different plays. Um, and nobody that, that – not one of those guys um, that replaced the starter, uh, none of those were in that 27 that, that could have made a play to win that game at any point in time. Um, because they, they tried. They, they, they tried to, to, to give it back to us, even though we weren't playing well. And so – um, when your number's called, you got you got to play. So I'm not going to sit here and, and and put anything on starters being out. That's football. That's that's a part of a of a of a Big 12 schedule. That's going to happen. Um, next guy's got to be ready. Where's your frustration level with <clears throat> the dropped interceptions? Uh, how do you rectify it? Is it as simple as keep practicing? Or? I mean, yeah. I mean, that's all you can do. Um, you know, I, we there's a. There's a specific technique to catching a football, a specific technique um, in your drop, at the top of your drop, whether you're underneath, whether you're, you're flat shuffling, or whether you're hinging and sliding back. Um, you know, a lot of times it's about the break. It's the fundamentals of the drop, your, your pad level in the drop. Everybody always talks about pad level as it's a line of scrimmage thing because that's, what the, that's, the, that's the part that everybody focuses on when they watch a TV copy is the O-line and the D-line. So everybody talks about pad level. Well, it's just as important if you're an underneath dropper. All right, so if, my, if, if, if I turn and my legs cross over at the top of my drop and the ball comes off the quarterback's hand, I, I can't break. I can't break on that ball. So what happens is – I wait. The, the, we're waiting on the ball, and the traffic ends up either affecting uh, a, a distract, making a distracted catch when it doesn't have to be, or actually affecting the catch, um, which has happened twice this year, um, once at TCU and once once Thursday night. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating because you're seeing these plays, uh, and you're and and guys are in position, and at the end of the day, just like we talked about with the injuries, like your number's called, you got to make the play. So it's it's pretty high. Hey Jordan, the 27 plays, what are we talking about there? Sounds like it could be very small but important. I mean, it's you know you know it's it's always you know because kids kids now social media to uh, you know you know a lot of them watch highlights right and and that's that one play is going to be whatever everything that that everybody talks about. But any time that a that a, that a or they're going to talk about officials, right? And it's your, it's our responsibility not to put the game into the hands of one play and or officials and or another team. And so those 27 plays are a dropped interception, three third down conversions on a short field on, on a poor punt. Um, they were basic fundamental things, um, whether it's down and distance awareness um, to a very simply – a basic fundamental. So those, and there's there's 27 of them, and I'm not gonna sit here and go through every single one of them. That would take all day. But um, 
I'm just making the point that we didn't lose a play on we didn't lose the game on the last play of the game. There's there's it, there's tons of them that lead up to that. And he talked about maybe the team mentally still being in the bye week, and then Neil even talked about maybe retrospect he would have handled the bye week differently. Is that something that you agree with, and was that a vibe at all? Like when you're going well, through the game, that you're like, maybe no, you guys I, aren't I think the biggest lesson is 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 for all. You know, young men, 18 to, to 22, 23 years old, is handling success is is way harder than handling failure. I think it's easier to handle failure if if you're competitive, if if you if you don't like to lose, if you don't like not being successful at whatever you're doing, basketball, baseball, it doesn't matter. It's the hardest thing is when you when you have success and to, to be able to sustain that. You know, when you do have time to, hey, take a breath and take a step back, all right? And that step back has got to be a, it's got to be a mental preparation. It's got to be a getting your body where it needs, back where it needs to be. Uh, after, after really four really hard, hard games, four out of the five there, really physical, really hard games. And so how you handle that individually and as a unit uh, or, and as a team, that, that is something that, that you're always going to look back and question. But it's, it's, it's harder to me, in my opinion, it's harder to handle that than it is to, to handle failure. I suspect you'd rather handle success, uh, deal with handling success rather than failure. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, the, that's the biggest lesson it is, yeah, hey, you know, this is, um, you know, we, we talked about the 14 and, and, and getting a gift at the beginning of the year. Well, they just handed you a lesson and how, in, in our league, how you have to prepare and be ready no, you know, because it's it's there's not a whole lot of there's not just not a whole lot of difference. Um, and when you know, again, when when you're not playing to your standard, but you're still in the game, you're still constantly in the game, in the game. Then there's got to be a play made always by your best players to get you to get you over the hump. And so, and, and that's how you put the game in the hands of a end of play scenario, a Hail Mary or, or whatever it may be. And there's, like, again, there's tons of things that, that lead up to that, but nothing leads up to it more than the preparation to just go play the next game. And that's what, handling the success as well as, as the failure. So, yeah, I would much rather handle that. But, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like how we handle this week will tell us just as much as handling failure will tell us just as much as handling success. You and Hill, it sounds like you're sending a message to your best players this week that it's up to them to, to get things yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, you, you, your best players have to have to play well. And it doesn't matter how long they do this. That You know, if you're, the, if you're the best player, there's an expectation of how you play. And I don't think that's any different from high school to the NFL. There's a, there's a specific expectation on how, you're, how you should play every week. That's why you're the best player. And it has a lot, and it has more to do with talent. But that's the expectation. Your thoughts on the last play? What, you know, I, I mean, there's there's always there's Monday morning quarterback, and there's there's things you look back at. Um, you know, really from from my perspective, if anything, um, probably could have been done that I would look back and, and do differently. It's the play before, is understanding. In that situation, um, right where we needed to be, um, in, in, instead of being a little further, that, that, you know, looking back, you look back. It's, it's really a fundamental, a technical issue. We had the exact same people. All right, and we didn't substitute um, what we call a hail mary in because of, of there's really a, a lot going on, and you and you dang sure don't want to have any type of substitution issue there. But it's still the same personnel. All right, minus, minus really two guys. Okay, our best jumpers are still in the game. Our best jumpers that we have on our team are on defense. Um, and, and, and like I said, if there's anything that, that's a, that just so we understand, like most, most people, when they line that play up, all right, you got a right handed quarterback. So most of his receivers are going to be to that side and they're going to create grass to that. Well, what do they do? They put them into the boundary to, away from a right handed quarterback's arm. All right, so guys had to see that and then adjust to it. But at the, at the point of contact, you had the same guys in the same positions that, that would have been normally. 
Okay. Um, probably agree with, with Neil, maybe, maybe a little pressure right there, but, but at the end of the day, um, Jared Bartlett is spying the guy and he does exactly what I coached him to do. When he goes to throw the ball, he pulls off because I mean, we I like quarterbacks are made of glass. Okay. So if he hits him in any situation there, game cannot end on a defensive penalty. He did exactly what he was coached to do. And if he hits that kid, that's a penalty. And they're going to throw it 100% of the time. All right. And so, but again, that same, the same front you use for that is to flush and get people around when he would have went away from, from that, just how it worked out. You know I mean? It's, there's all kinds of, of, uh, different things in that scenario. At the end of the day, bad fundamental jump, missed time, missed time jump. And so what happens is, is if, if you miss time it and you start to go down and you go back and as you're trying to get do this, your body's going backwards and end up going up. And so fundamentally it was, was, was not played very well, not played how we work. Um, but it's, I'm never going to look at that play and be like, yeah, that, and I, and I play it back and forth in my head time and time again and say, well, if this, if this, if this, never should have come down to that. Neil did actually bring up the Patriots using Gronk in that situation as a tight end years ago. Any regret that Cole Taylor, for example, maybe wasn't out there, was he uh, just with his size or? No, I mean, we, we do, we do, uh, we do um, um, uh, end of the summer, you know, testing kind of competition, do the, or we call it king of the climb. And if anybody in here wants to argue that Hershey McLaurin can't jump higher than anybody on our football team, go watch him jump. You know, and so if I'm, you know, six seven and whether well, I'm six one, if I got a vertical, I got a vertical. You know, if I can jump, I can jump. And Hershey can jump. It's just the timing was not was not what what it needed to be. Um, I don't think that that having, you know. And you're not going to do. You're not going to get a, get them in a scenario that you hadn't worked. We've never worked Cole there. Um, we've worked the guys that jump the highest on our football team. Yeah, is that easier said than done? I guess also to fans immediately point to tall guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I understand the why. Like why anybody would say that. But um, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things that, that that people don't know that they, you know, because he's six seven. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. You know, but. We, we had the guys we needed in there. Looking at uh, Oklahoma State, Ollie Gordon, is it a scenario he's just, is it just he's their best player so they get him the ball? I mean, everybody, I mean, y'all have heard me say this a, a ton in here. Like, every, everybody in our league has a back, has a good back. Some, mo, some of them more than, you know, more than one. Um, he's a complete back, uh, big, fast, strong, good vision. Um, Runs, runs powerful, hard tackle, um, especially when he gets going. Uh, he is, he is a good, good player. But he's, he's, you know, our league is full of running backs like that, constantly. I don't back. They've not settled on one. Um, how much does that help them instead of rotating two or three guys? Well, I mean, any time that that you find whatever that rhythm may be, and you find that, um, and it affects the entire offense like it affects an entire defense and, and or special team. So, you know, they've obviously found that rhythm with him, makes their offense go. Um, he is uh, he's being smart with the ball and he's being being good at what his skill set allows him to, to be good at, um, which is, you know, RPOs, quick throws, get the ball out, um, extend plays when he needs to um, and don't don't put the ball in the hands of the other team. And that's, that's pretty simple, pretty simple formula. What's it like scouting Bowman now that he's in a different system? I mean, a guy you've seen before, but now he's in a different system. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard. It, it's, it's the system is different, but you you watch the fundamentals and the mechanics of a of any player. They're they're you know they're going to be um, pretty much who they are. You know, the system it, it can help them. It can it can hurt them. You know, I mean, but um, you know, one thing that that. Like I said, he, that he's not he's not putting the ball in the hands of another team. So that that obviously is is a recipe for them for success. Okay. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks.